I'm sorry, man, but I know some of y'all are really big on the moves and really big on the matches, and that's because you take wrestling so seriously. It's such a great passion of yours. I respect that. But even you got to agree at some point in time that it's not just about the moves and matches. And the moves in some of these matches that a lot of these talents are doing, whether it is on a Raw or a SmackDown or an NXT or an AEW, an Impact, or wherever the hell it is, need to stop. This overuse of high-risk spots is dangerous on so many different levels. I mean, what's it going to have to take for people to stop this? Are we going to have to have more wrestlers be paralyzed? Are we going to have to have some die in the ring because of a move being botched and going horribly wrong? Like, it feels like that's the tra trajectory that we're heading down. Somewhere along the way, wrestling lost its way. I have ideas and opinions on what happened and what helped drive that. Looking at you, Meltzer. Looking at you, Alvarez. But certainly not them alone. Just had a significant major contributing impact on that. But what happened? Wrestling used to be about characters. It used to be about stories. It used to be about larger-than-life personalities. It used to be about spectacle. It used to be about making stuff believable, making it look really real, but not actually going out there and causing significant physical damage to your working partner. But that's what it used to be about. And wrestling, when it was about that, was significantly more popular than it is now, where we've de-emphasized the characters, de-emphasized the storytelling. The vast majority of wrestling rosters around the world can't cut a goddamn promo to save their lives. The spectacle doesn't matter. It's all crash dummy crap. What happened? What went wrong? And more so, why does this persist and it only get worse and worse over time? Like I saw the thing come across Twitter on Wednesday night during NXT. I don't even know who the hell it was. And at this point in time, it doesn't even matter. I don't even care. These two ladies are sitting there fumble fucking around on the ring apron and all of a sudden sit there and hit this really crappy, ridiculous looking driver top of the spot. I don't even know what the hell it was. Like, it looked god-awful, and it looked terrible, and it looked about two or three inches away from causing real significant injury and harm to one or both of the competitors. And yet, you see these types of moves called for in matches and executed often so poorly in matches time after time after time, and look. I'm not trying to be the boomer. I'm not trying to be angry wrestling fanny over the sky and says, you want some? Come on, get some. I'm not trying to be that guy. But what I don't get is these men, these ladies, are going out there and doing this crap all the damn time. Potentially significantly shortening the lifespans of their careers, therefore significantly shortening their in the ability to earn a living at what they do for what? For a cheap pop? Because you don't know how to get the fans engaged? Because you don't know how to actually get over in the much more meaningful ways that matter historically in the world of professional wrestling? What in the hell is it? In some ways, I blame the fans. Because when you look at wrestling now, there's so many God-blessed marks in the freaking business. How the hell do you know the difference? And if anything, I would say, in defense of wrestling fans, they're much tougher than the people in wrestling. Those are the whiny crybabies. Those are the sissies. Those are the insecure, insensitive jerks. It's not the fans anymore. 
It's when the fans get into wrestling, they get all these wrestling bubble shenanigans in their mindset, and that's when the problems arise. But I do blame the fans still, because these are the types of matches that they tweet about. These are the types of matches that they talk about. So many of the YouTubers, so many of the podcasters. These are the types of moves and moments that they mark out for. So they encourage and promote this type of reckless, silly, stupid, nonsensical type of wrestling behavior. And it has to stop. Like, seriously. It's one thing if you're saying it's at a pay-per-view. Or even, let's say, it's at a TV match, but it's something that's a blow-off to a story that's happened over two or three months. And it has risen to that moment and point where, okay, you want to do something big to really make an impact, to really blow this off in a big way. It's certainly another thing if you're talking about it's WrestleMania or some type of major, significant, let's say, WWE Big Four show. Or it's a Wrestle Kingdom show. Or, you know, some, some type of major, big, significant show in the world of professional wrestling. Like if it was all out for AEW, for example. Like, if it's one of those big shows, I get it. You're trying to make a statement. You are trying to stand out. You are trying to give the fans something that makes them remember that moment, that show, that makes them want to come back again. I totally and completely get that. Those types of situations, it makes sense. But you got damn near everybody in professional wrestling doing suicide dives through the middle ropes. So it was an Ibar or whatever the fuck from the Viking Raiders, whoever the hell they are. Like, and then that kind of the point? Like, all I remember is fat man flying through the middle of the ropes and then apparently hurt him damn self. Why the hell is fat man going through the middle ropes doing a suicide dive when I've seen it five other times in the damn show and usually it's multiple times during the damn match? How about people learn how to throw right hands? How about people learn to do some of the basic moves? An armbar, for God's sakes. So many of them don't even do a suplex in a way that looks decent. Drop kicks. Like, I know that's really making me sound old here, but damn it, so many of these guys can't execute, and gals can't execute the basics that because they can't execute the basics, they got to sit there and basically crash tummy their asses through these matches. And all you're doing is putting yourself at greater risk for less money instead of making it look real and not hurting yourselves, you're making it look fake and actually hurting yourself. That is the definition of idiotic. And all that for a match that nobody cares about and no buildup, just nothing. No, habit, no attempt to tell a story. No attempt to do anything to actually create drama. Just, hey, we got it all shit in. How many times you watch wrestling now, and it is clear and obvious that matches are constructed in a way with all the stupid-ass 50-50 booking, regardless of company, doesn't matter anymore. They all pretty much do it consistently, like all the time, because the talent have too much say, oh, i got to make him look good. i got to let him get his stuff in. i got to get my stuff in. So it's not about actually getting anybody the hell over. And all of these spots aren't getting anybody the hell over. I know what you're going to say. Oh, no, 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 that old guy doesn't like the hardcore wrestling, but when it's people like Mick Foley and Terry Funk, that's okay. Listen here, a-holes. If we want to go down that path, oh, well, let's go down that path. Terry Funk is Terry Funk. Number one. Number two. Not every match of his had to feature incredibly ridiculous, stupid spots. It just happened to stand out more at the time and appeal more at the time when he did them because he didn't have everybody damn doing them on the show up and down throughout the whole freaking car. Terry Funk could cut a promo. Terry Funk was a character. Terry Funk, you looked at Terry Funk and you see a professional wrestler. Now, some wannabe jujitsu karate gymnast. And Mick Foley. You want to talk about Mick Foley being a crash test dummy. Well, maybe he was. But he could also be multiple different personalities and characters as a professional wrestler. He was a tremendous storyteller with great comedic timing, great promo timing, 
Great ability to connect with the audience, both as a heel and a baby face. And oh, by the way, Ding Dong Dumb Dicks, one of the greatest talkers in professional wrestling history. And also, again, doing it at a time when not every single damn person did it. Like, I think back to ECW when it was running its hottest in the mid and especially late 90s. Like, they were doing a lot of extreme, stupid stuff. That's true. A lot of damn near backyard wrestling type of stuff, you would say. But not every single match at WCW was like that. Not every match at WWF at the time was like that. And ECW didn't have to have every single match be like that. But that was still part of their brand and still part of their identity. But at the same point in time, you didn't have everybody doing that. Now you got everybody doing ridiculously looking high-risk spot after ridiculously looking high-risk spot. So many times you see with these matches, all these nerds online talking about how great the match was, but the finish fell, finish fell a little flat. Yeah, because you're tired of seeing 300 damn things during the match that look more serious and more impactful than the actually poorly timed, poorly executed, crappy-looking, fake-ass finish. For all of these younger wrestlers and people that are thinking about getting into wrestling, do yourself a favor. Before you go to a wrestling school, go to an acting school. Go to some type of promo school. Get online. Pretend to be characters. Cut practice promos. Learn how to be a personality. Do some creative writing. Learn how to be a storyteller. Learn how to do all of those things. For God's sake, hit the gym. No, you don't have to be a roided up freak, but you shouldn't look like me and be trying to sell yourself as some big imposing physical threat. Like it's a joke. It makes people laugh. And that's why half of the damn people that used to watch wrestling don't anymore. It's not because it got cartoonish. It's, it's because the characters suck. The writing sucks. The storytelling sucks. In so many cases. Like you went from guys like Stone Cold and The Rock and the NWO and Sting, The Undertaker. You went from those types of guys to guys like, and I mean no offense here, but let's just call it as we see it. Johnny Wrestling and Adam Cole and Ricochet and Finn Balor and any other numbers of hundreds of guys doesn't matter because, again, so many of them act, look, wrestle, and work the damn same, talk the same, bore you to tears the same. It just irritates me because I really legitimately worry about the future of professional wrestling and it continues down this path. I also really legitimately worry about the health and safety of these men and women because it feels like more and more the old kids don't try this at home, WWE, you know, PSA. It sure, certainly as hell feels that way now. Because it feels like wrestling is more dangerous than it ever has been because of the reckless decisions in terms of the spots thrown into matches because everybody's got to do it. And all the while, nobody's standing out with doing them. What do I care that somebody could do a triple flippy 720 grab your nuts into flaming shards of ass glass? When the match before had that and the two matches after we also have that type of spot. Stop being crash test dummies. Start learning how to actually be characters and performers. Start learning how to actually freaking work. Save these high risk ridiculous spots for where they're called for. There is certainly a time and a place for them. It's risk reward. But your risk should not be greater than your reward. And doing spots that can potentially paralyze you or kill you if they are just a couple of inches different in terms of their execution on a show where you're drawing barely 700,000 viewers or under a hundred or under a million viewers consistently is just not a wise business decision. Period.